fantastic. Uh, thank you for that introduction, Bill. I think that's really uh, set the tone for today and, um, and certainly given all of us an idea about how we got into this, this current situation because I think that's the important thing is understanding the journey that we've taken to here before we start talking about um, you know, how we then bring it even uh, more into the future in terms of the next stage of investment. So uh, a great introduction from Bill. Um, the next speaker uh, we've got is Jakob Führerborn from Deutsche Telekom. He is the, the Chief uh, Technology Officer. Um, he's held a number of different posts uh, in his time at, at uh, Deutsche Telekom, uh, but I think it's probably this one that I think is of, of most relevance uh, and interest today. It's about how we're using different technologies to bring those uh, speeds to consumers. Um, so if we could please um, welcome Bruno to the stage. Thank you.
question, is it only about fiber? So already one year later, because we discussed with them, and we invited them, we were there, we looked at this one, it was a great approach, and then we found out after half a year, one year, well, if you like to do it in the way as in Germany is required, because in Germany, you know, in a city, there's no area cabling allowed. Each mayor tells you, if you go into a city, you have to go underground. Well, and if you do civil work underground, it's very costly. So we found out it costs billions, and it takes us another piece, years to make that happen. It's not done in five years. It takes you decades to make that happen if you have each and every household to do that. So that, that is maybe not the way in Germany as we could do it as Deutsche Telekom. Not in the way that we are owned by a government because we have shareholders, the government is one shareholder, but we have a majority of shareholders without the government. So we said, okay, today, if you look at the, the use cases, one was mentioned, for example, Netflix, if you look in other things, TVs, and a lot of things are happening already today. If you look to the demands we are seeing, they are also there because we talk about autonomous driving, edge cloud computing. So a lot of things are changing. The data is coming closer to the customer. There is more hunger for broadband. The only question is, what is the broadband we need as a customer? Is it one gig? Is it 50 megabit? Is it 20 megabit? Something that we try to find out and we come to some conclusion compared to the rollout of cost and time. So everybody speaks about FTTH, but if you look to consumers, they have sometimes a different view. And even if you look to Netflix, they do one thing. They send you, uh, say, a KPI. They measure your average speed you have in your network, forcing you to do a little bit more because it's just a ranking. And if you're at the very end, you think, what is happening there? Can you do a bit faster? But do you know what is the average speed for Netflix across the world, more or less? What do you have on average? Any idea? Around four to five megabit. It, it doesn't matter if it's fiber, if it's coax, or if it's just uh, FTTC. Interesting to see. I can just give you all this data. So but having said this one, looking to that, I said, okay, what can we do as Deutsche Telekom to live, deliver broadband to our customers. Because if you get 50 megabit per second, for example, are you exhausted at home with that 50 megabit per second? Can you utilize it? Most of you can't do that. And then we found out, and the striking thing what happened is that we changed a little bit our, our methodology is, when we look at the customers we have on fiber, you can get data plans for 50 megabit, for 100 meg, for 200 meg, in the future for one gig. Guess how many our customers percentage-wise use 50 megabit per second on fiber? More than 50%. They have fiber at home, and they only like to pay for 50 megabit per second because that's enough for me. If that is the case, the question is, okay, can we bridge it on a way to go further? So what we did is, we invented the so-called integrated network strategy. We say, okay, whatever we can do, we will roll out fiber. So for all new households, there we have new areas, we will done. If you go, for example, for business customer, yes, we will do fiber, we go there. But what happens with the 41 million households we have at hand at home? We decided, well, look, if you look to our architecture we have, we have 380,000 so-called street cabinets. These very, ni very nice gray boxes at the street. And from there to the homes, the average length is roughly 300 to 350 meters on average. So what we decided is, okay, we go from our 8,000 central offices to the street cabinets with fiber. From there, we deliver 50 megabit per second, that is PDSL. Then we do some chip tuning, because you know that the development is increasing. We increase it to 100 megabit per second in download, and 40 megabit in upload. The next thing is super vectoring. We introduce it uh, next year. is from 100 megabit to 250 megabit. And you know, the fiber is coming from the central office 
to the gray boxes, and there is a street cover. That's, and then you have, on average, 250 megabits per second. And the second thing is then going even further with fiber closer to the house. So comes something what you are seeing called FTTP, so FTTH or FTTB, we say. And then in-house, we use still copper, G dot fast wind, we come in the direction of one gigabit per second. So what we do is the evolution going from the central office with fiber first to the street cabinet, then closer to the customers. At the end, we will be at FTTH. But this helps us to deliver very fast a high number of households with broadband. So last year we did uh, three and a half million, this year we do three and a half million, next year two or five million already in quarter one. So what we do is we promise to the government only Deutsche Telekom we will deliver up to 2018 80% of the households with minimum 50 megabit per second. So that is something what we do as a private owned company. And of course, we do now more regarding fiber and going further. But that is one piece. The second piece is that we say, okay, we do roll out on LTE and 5G. So we have the second uh, leg to say, okay, we do fiber and mobile. And on top of that one, we invented the so-called hybrid router. What is that? You see that one at the end. It's just saying we're using the normal router at home but we will do a bonding between mobile and fixed. It works like that. If you have maybe 60 megabit at home, but you need 25 megabit because you do two HD movies from Netflix or whatever you have here, or from Cox in the US, you use it and you use first and utilize the fixed line. So if 16 is not enough, the delta will be delivered by the mobile network. So that is the four pieces, four pillars we have. Fiber roll wherever we can. Reutilizing our copper, but that is, copper is already for us fiber because part of it is fiber. Then having mobile and uh, the combination of both. So that is something what we say because only saying we have this dogma, we have to deliver FTTH, will not work for cost and time wise. And the customer is not buying five pound of fiber or six pound of copper. He buys broadband, and it doesn't matter for him if it's fiber-based or copper-based, because at the end we don't see it. However, perception matters, lifestyle. If somebody tells you it's fiber, say, OK, it should be put approved. If somebody it's copper, oh no, it's old-fashioned. So we shouldn't talk about that one. We should say, you can buy broadband, and we have to deliver our customers the demands they have and fulfill that. So having said this, I to give you a little bit on that, what the politic is doing, of course. From the political point of uh, their view, we are, as Deutsche Telekom, a nightmare because we don't build FTTH. We should do much more. Something has to change. And we just recently have had an election. And at the moment, the coalition, or the new coalition where they're heading to, we call it Jamaica. You know why? We have mainly three parties. It's four, but uh, there are three parties. One is the so-called black one, that is the Christ Democrats. Then we have the yellow ones, that's the liberals, the FDP, and we have the Green Party. And if you look at the flag of Jamaica, it looks like Jamaica. <laughs> well, and everybody said, okay, we have never had that in Germany before. So they tried to find now an agreement, how they could work together. And one piece, of course, is uh, how to bring broadband to the customers. And you see that what they're talking about, can the politician solve that for us? What can be done? So there are huge debates how to make that happen. And they only speak about fiber, not about broadband. And they give you now a flavor how that looks like. European figures. And the European Union has a definition that they say, okay, if you have next generation access, and you see this disclaimer, what it is, it's VDSL, it's boxes, cable, above 30 megabit per second. Here you see what happens in Europe. Germany is 15.1 house, uh, million households, UK is 12.9, and so on. And what is, of course, dark magenta is more than 80% of the households are already on NGA technology. There you see the difference, how it looks like. Yeah? It's, of course, no politician looks at this like, like that. Brussels is doing it. Then, of course, to give you a more interesting flavor, how does it look like in rural areas and, of course, in urban areas? There you see 
for example, Germany, that are the figures from June 16, sorry, there's no other data available European-wide, I could tell you the German ones, it's increasing significantly, but just to compare that, Germany is with 82% in overall uh, much better than uh, the average, and uh, if it comes to rural areas, the same, and it's developing. So that's okay, it's middle class. But if you look to the fiber rollout, Germany is at the very end. And if you look, compare uh, Europe, the most important economies in Europe, it's UK and Germany. Europe, I still quote uh, uh, Britain to, uh, to, uh, to the European Union, they may have changed my mic, I'm not sure. But uh, you see that, if it comes to that, just looking for fiber, we are at the very, very end. If it goes to the average connection speed, oh, we are already in the middle. And if it comes to NGA, we are getting in the top of class. So it's, it depends which KPI you are using. So for a customer, it's only one thing what matters. What is the speed you get? And you see we are building significantly speed on more than 50 megabit per second on NGA technology. So we're really boosting that one. I would say CapEx to sales show is the highest in Europe. We are committed to that to build that network at an 80% with more than 50 megabit per second on average. And I say at least 50 megabit per second. I think that is the most important thing what I will show here. And if you go further, and this course from the European Union regarding the uh, digital economy and society, that index, then you see the countries and companies who are using FTTC are on the top. And the companies who are using FTTH are in the bottom because it takes too long to make it happen. However, if you talk to our CEO, he once came back from Brussels, it was very clear to me, it can't be if you look to 28 countries and in 25, Germany, that's at the very bottom of FTTH. That doesn't work at all. So we have to do something. That is true, but on the way, if you only build after the age, you are too slow. It takes too long to get the majority of your customers uh, to the broadband, giving them broadband access. So it's a combination. And you see, companies who are using FTTC, they did something for the economy and did something for the customers. Yeah? The, most people uh, say <coughs> underestimate FTTC on the way to fiber. Don't get me wrong. And with 5G, <coughs> the landscape will change anyhow. Because with FTTC, you already have fiber in the streets. And if it comes then to lamp poles and wall mount and comes to 5G and fixed wireless access, the world will change. So, having said this one, give you NGA coverage, it will be a little bit quicker now than it's time was. Uh, so, there are some things to see. We are developing, going further. The NGA coverage is not too bad, I must say, going forward. Uh, if you see what we do only in Germany, we are building uh, every year significant amount of, cop uh, of a fiber. And if you compare it to our competitors, they do more or less nothing on that. So we do a lot of things. And as I said, uh, building fiber in Germany is a tricky thing. We are not allowed to do fiber on aerial cabling, so we have to dig. And that is very, very expensive. And just give you a number from the civil work capacity in Germany. Deutsche Telekom is using 75% with the rollout we do on FTTC. If you would change now the huge FTTH program, no way physically to make that happen in a decent time frame. So, having said that, <coughs> giving you that is a little bit how we uh, define that, and because it's very often it's difficult to understand if what is FTTH, what is FTTP, what is FTTP, and so on. This shows we have a complete variety. We will do copper, FTTC, we have NGA with uh, 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 vectoring, super vectoring, G dot fast, one gig by the way, it's on copper. And in a house with 50 meter, you even can get 11 gigabit per second with digital with Nokia. So there's a lot of development because the processing power is changing. We have a lot of development in the valley, in Silicon Valley, what we can we do on existing copper cabling. So I think the mix will make it, and it's shown here. Then, I've shown that to you. Here's a picture of it, which makes this very clear, that we have the bonding on the hybrid router. This is a great tool, to be honest, to make it having using the fixed line you have plus uh, the mobile part. 
Then we are doing a lot of development on LTE. I will skip that for you. It's not a thing for NBN so important. But this is thing, something what is really cool. We do that uh, together with Facebook in Menlo Park, fixes wireless access in this millimeter wave. Fully automated, so nobody is planning it, is touching it. That we say this is something what we have to do, and I think you do it here in Australia as well, but we do it even in urban cities to find out is it possible to do the last, say, meters with mobile and not with fiber. And having said this one, this shows you how an area could look like. You have fiber, you have FTTC, you have mobile, depending on the situation you have. Because it can happen, maybe you have the same here in, in, in Australia, that on one side of the street you have fiber, on the other side of the street you don't, don't have fiber. That means your neighbor on the opposite of the street has one gig, and yourself has only maybe five megabits. Yes, that happens. So for that reason, you have to see how to bridge it and then to see that we say, okay, from the current rollout, just being dogmatic, we would like to have a converted access network that helps all customers to get the fiber or the broadband uh, you would like to have. So, summarizing this one, get in the direction, even with the old network with politicians that we have at Deutsche Telekom, we get awarded with a lot of prizes that we have a really good network. And uh, this shows that the combination out of wireless, fiber, copper, and the hybrid access is the name of the game. And I think it's good to see what you're doing here, to learn from you. Uh, and I give you why. But that was now what we're doing in Deutsche Telekom. And uh, I think the right balance between all of them, all technologies we have, is the right thing to do. And as a customer, I don't care. Is it based on fiber? Is it based on copper? Is it based on mobile? The variety of the technology will help us to make it happen. So thank you very much for listening and thank you very much for giving the opportunity to show you our view. Thank you. Okay, great. That was uh, fantastic, Bruno. Thank you for, um, for giving that first insight into to Europe. Um, probably we also should have had a, a bit of an acronym uh, buster on the, on the slide there, because of course in Australia, what you call uh, FTTN, we call FTTC, and you know there are obviously others, but I think most of us know uh, what we're talking about. Um, I think we've got a couple of minutes before we uh, we have the next speaker, so I don't know if there are any questions um, in the room for, for Bruno. Okay, perhaps not if at, uh, not at this stage. Then, oh, sorry, there was one just over here on the on the left. I'm getting from uh, site. I've seen uh, your roadmap of uh, copper, GFAST, and uh, fiber. Uh, it seems uh, kind of uh, missing uh, DOCSIS or cable HFC. Yeah, we, we have a little bit of DOCSIS because we were forced uh, from the regulator to sell our network to, to the cable companies. Yes, DOCSIS is another one, it's part of the NGA coverage in Germany, but as Deutsche Telekom, we have just a few things, so we don't mention it because we don't use it because we don't have the infrastructure. But you are right, in Germany itself, so 70% of the households are covered by DOCSIS as well. That is a competition we have on NGA. So it's there and it's part of the overall game in Germany. Yeah? Back to the mic. <coughs> Does it answer the question? Yeah. Thank you. Hi, uh, Alex Zaharov Roy from ITY.com. Uh, you, you talk about the hybrid routers with. 4G and presumably 5G in the future. We have some telcos in Australia doing that too. Do you think 5G prices will really dramatically drop the cost of wireless broadband? Because a lot more people would use it, but at the moment the big hindrance, of course, is that it's vastly more expensive than wired broadband. So I mean, is that the case in Germany as well? And is 5G going to equalize the cost of wired and wireless broadband? So, um, if you look into the business cases of the different operators so far, there is no business case for 5G yet. So, uh, but due to the new case with narrower IG, everything will be connected. We will get fixed wireless access. You know, uh, Verizon is spending a lot of money over there. They, they, for frequency, they, they bought for five billion dollar on 28 gigahertz. So there's a lot of trials and testing. Uh, around that one, we do the same with millimeter wave. So I would say in the next two, three, four years, there will be the breakthrough. At the moment, it's not there. 
But with edge cloud computing, for example, if it comes to autonomous driving, or if you look at this one uh, where we say, okay, how is it possible in the future if you get e-mobility, let's see power companies understand where to charge, when to charge, and if priority this or this, and there are a lot of no new use cases at the horizon, and we are all working in the industry on getting our arms around that one. So I would say the first breakthrough we will see with, I'm not sure Katie will talk about this one today, so yeah, it's the Winter Olympics, uh, and they have shown what they would like to do in the state is on 28 gigahertz, it looks very impressive. Japan is doing that, the summer, summer Olympics in 2020, in 2022, it's in China, there's a huge competition in Asia to make that happen together, and we all will benefit from that one. But today, we have it on the drawing board, and I can't give you now a green light for the future. Our finance quality would kill me for that one because there's still a lot of work to do. But it will come. Also, you mentioned you're working. Hello? Yeah, you, so you mentioned you're working with Nokia. Are you doing anything with Artemis Networks, which is talking about. Which one? Artemis, A R T E M I S. Yeah. Talking, yeah, talking about the, their technology which can deliver 5G speeds on existing 4G networks. The criticism appears to be that you have to put. Uh, little access points all over the place, but that seems to be something you have to do with 5G anyway. And fiber is in the street, as you're saying, is the backbone. So are, are you doing anything in that regard? And I ask that question to all the other telcos here, because I've heard a lot about Artemis, and I, I hear nobody talking about it. It's like it doesn't exist, and I, I think that's a shame. No, what, what we do is one thing, and we're not talking about maybe a vendor, we talk vendor regarding this uh, copper field. So we have an initiative called x -Run. And TIP, X1 is the Stanford University, uh, AT&T, China Mobile, to say, okay, can we do it different just by uh, an Intel x86, so standard hardware, bring software on this one, and to make it completely different the architecture I've seen beforehand. So we at the moment in the way for the next generation, uh, say, access for mobile to do it completely different as we have done it so far. Um, and with TIP, we do it with Facebook and all the others exactly in the same way. So how, what can we do to drive costs down? Because that is part of the equation to make 5G as cheap as possible. Yeah? So with that one, maybe not talking about vendors, because we do it with the vendors, we do it with research institutes and ourselves to get our arms around this one, uh, to use standardized hardware, and the rest is pure software, including having only say that is new in the future, you can build on one hardware different networks. In the future it can happen that you have maybe in Australia, uh, I'm not sure how many mobile operators you have here, that you have one physical hardware, and on top you have slicing technology, like highways with, uh, uh, with uh, Stockwerk in English. Uh, so different levels. Different levels yes. to, to make that happen. So we are on that way, and I've done a lot of development in NDM to make that happen. Thank it will come. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, uh, Bruno, for sticking around. Thank you. Thank you.